Hello friends and I'm taking classes uh, to make FIGO classification of different kinds of cancers easier for you and today I'm trying to bring to you now ovarian carcinoma. Now uh, I just took a class on cervical carcinoma, I tried to make it more simple and easy by telling you just to apply logic and you know yourself decide what will be the next stage. In a similar way I bring to you ovarian carcinoma in which uh, again uh, I'll give you the logic and you will see yourself understanding and applying your knowledge to understand why and how these stages are important. Now, the spread of uh, cervical carcinoma was basically through the lymphatic route or the hematogenous route. So basically the lymphatic channel or the hematogenous channels you will follow and you will understand that fine, stage 1 will be to the cervix, limited to the cervix, the cervix is going to, where will the cancer spread? It will spread either down or it will spread laterally. So that's how we designed the stages and that's how we understood why we had so much division and subdivision into you know stage 1a a1 and a2 again i told you now let's just forget it over there and let's now start thinking about the next carcinoma which is the most ambiguous strange and you know uh, difficult uh, carcinoma staging to remember and that is ovarian carcinoma so ovarian carcinoma staging do you do you see that i've not made any effort to make any structures you know they have not made uterus or cervix or uh, fallopian tubes over here it's just a very nutshell over here just a small portion of it why because that's the magnanimity of ovarian cancer it spreads fast it's got vague symptoms it's the most lethal cancer because by the time you catch it it's already disseminated and spread to you know far away distant places and you are in a very poor prognostic stage to be treated so that's why ovarian carcinoma happens to be a very, very important carcinoma to understand. Plus, it's, it's a staging. When I try to explain to the staging, you'll understand how different the staging is as compared to the other tumors. <clears throat> so let's begin with ovarian carcinoma and let's see its staging. <clears throat> so uh, we start with stage one. Okay, it, uh, I let me give you an outset, you know, a, a brief uh, rough uh, estimate of how ovarian carcinoma is like I gave you in state in your uh, cervical staging as well always remember that stage one is limited to the ovaries one or both the ovaries is stage one just limited to the ovary with a capsule intact capsule breached and you know I'll, I'll tell you one more thing in stage one which you have to remember positive ascytic fluid is stage one if only it is that much is involved nobody nowhere else is involved but it's very strange. But yeah, peritoneal cytology positive stage 1. 1A, one B, C, that I'll tell you later. But stage 1, that means I'm talking about ovarian carcinoma. Stage 1 means limited to the ovaries. And maximum it has gone to the peritoneal fluid. Because that's the mode of spread of, uh, of ovarian carcinoma. It spreads through the silomic spread or the peritoneal fluid. Just imagine if there is, a, if you put fluid inside. You know, if the patient is standing, sitting, whatever. If the patient is erect. In erect posture, you put some fluid inside the peritoneal cavity or, or you know, the other, the peritoneal cavity. Where is it going to seep? It's going to seep in the pelvic fluid. Uh, I'm sorry, in the pelvis. It will go down first because of the gravity, it will go down first. So, all the, it will, you know, kind of encompass all the organs which are, you know, around pelvis. That means POD, you know, the uterosacrals, the part of, you know, upper vagina or, uh, you know, bladder, rectum. And then when the patient is moving about, sitting, uh, she's sitting, lying down, getting up, then this fluid is going to go to the abdominal cavity. It's going to probably spread there, you know, in the abdominal cavity, including the retroperitoneal lymph nodes as well. The, of course, the pelvic lymph node chain is involved, omentum, and so many structures. In fact, the capsule of liver, capsule of spleen, any peritoneal deposit uh, in the abdominal cavity, and then it will gush even further, that is to the you know, like for example, I kept I I, I uh, put the peritoneal fluid inside the pa patient's peritoneum, and I put in it a couple of seeds. You know, let's just say let's just call them seeds or something. So the maximum is going to be deposited in the pelvis. Patient is going to lie down or something. It might you know less of them will deposit in the peritoneal cavity, and even less will go farther away, washed away, because the density, the gravitational pull somewhere in the down. In the area very close by. And the similar thing, this is what happens. Similar episode, similar spread is seen in ovarian carcinoma. What happens is that the seeding starts from the ovary and you know it's just shed. Once the capsule is breached, the seeds are like shed in the pelvic area. 
when that pelvic area uh, whatever may be the reason if there is fluid around or serous fluid starts to, you know coming out and then these things are washed away slowly towards the abdominal cavity so this becomes the stage 2 that was the stage 1 stage 2 is the pelvic involvement you know all those structures that you can think of bladder and rectum is, all, is also involved that is the most important thing of you know ovarian carcinoma that the pelvic structures means all the pelvic structures over here you know the contiguous spread to the serosa to or to the serosa of the bladder of the rectum of the peritoneal fluid the parametrium the uterosacral everything in the pelvic area stage 2 when the patient is like it's spreading even further this is going to go into abdo abdominal cavity which i just said microscopic seeds or macroscopic seeds retroperitoneal lymph nodes being automatically involved because that channel will automatically come hematogenous and lymphatic spread is going to come by the time it's already stage 3 no don't doubt that and then comes stage 4 in which the pleural effusion starts taking place or you know the hepatic parenchyma is involved the splenic parenchyma is involved that is the stage 4 now let's go to the subdivisions so remember one thing that stage 1 and stage 3 are the two stages in which you have to say a b c in stage 2 and stage 4 it will be only a and b and stage 2 and 4 are still easier stages stage 1 and stage 3 are difficult stages out of which stage 1 is also I'll, i'll make it very easy for you stage 3 you'll have to try to remember a little because it's slightly complicated now stage 1 a and b and c so stage a is limited to one ovary just one ovary stage b is limited to both ovaries and stage 3 is divided to three categories in which there is surgical spill so up till now you know limited to one ovary or limited to both the ovaries three things were satisfied there was no capsular breach there was no ascitic fluid and obviously there was no spill be it iatrogenic be it what because of whatever there was no ha, there was no tumor on the surface so the capsule was intact there was no tumor on the outer surface and there the, there was no positive seed in the uh, or malignant cells in the peritoneal fluid because of which you were very sure that you uh, can give her a chance by simple oophorectomy unilateral or bilateral oophorectomy you do not have to take out the uterus and you might not have to do a very uh, you know uh, aggressive surgical treatment in this patient you can give her a chance provided all these three things are satisfied there is no tumor on the external surface because the seedings will start after that there is no capsular breach and obviously there is no peritoneal cytology positive for you know the malignant cells uh, stage 2 when you come to stage 2 and uh, yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry so let's go back to this stage c i did not describe you stage c one becomes there is a surgical spill stage 2 becomes either there is malignant there are malignant cells on the surface or there was the capsulus breached and stage 3 becomes the positive malignant cells in the cytologic sample of a cytic fluid that means you tap the cytic fluid and it came positive for malignant cell that becomes stage 1c stage 1c three now we go to stage 2 when i said all these pelvic organs are involved so stage 2a will become only when either the fallopian tubes or uterus is involved now this leads continuous contiguous spread where will it go it will go first to the tubes then it will go to the uterus you think yourself right and then it will start spreading to rest of the organs of the pelvis which is stage 2b so all the other organs involved you know the cut, the, uh, the organs which are close by you know the bladder serosa or the rectal serosa the periparametrium the uterosacral the pouch of douglas all this is what pelvic organs surrounding the ovaries so that is stage 2b now comes a difficult stage which is stage 3 that is why i have written it in short so that you can understand it so stage 3 is actually the spread to the abdominal cavity and what are you basically bothered in abdominal cavity i want to see what is the tumor load in the abdominal cavity so if the amentum is involved you know how big deposits are there on the amentum i want to see that whether they are more than 2 cm whether they are less than 2 cm or whether this microscopic seedings which i just got to know because i had sampled the amentum so you do amentectomy when you doing staging laparotomy you always say that right that's simply because of the fact this of the spread of the ovarian cancer it does not go by a hematogenous or lymphatic route it goes by direct seeding cellomic spread so omentum is very easily involved right so what we do basically is we do uh, you know intracolic omentectomy or let's say omentectomy for that matter and we do send it for biopsy so if there are deposits 
that means we're talking about stage 3 over here and how do we divide into stage a b c positive retroperitoneal lymph nodes okay positive retroperitoneal lymph nodes with or without micromets that means you're always sampling the lymph nodes over here and if suppose retroperitoneal lymph nodes are coming positive that's definite stage 3 but at the same time, it's incomplete if you do not tell me what is the peritoneal deposits, whether they're microscopic or they're mi macroscopic. Because if retroperitoneal lymph nodes are positive and there are macroscopic deposits, it becomes stage 3C, which, you know, with the prognosis, which is not very good. I don't say stage 3 is super good, but uh, stage 3C is even worse. So for counseling, for follow-up, for recurrence, for everything, for juvenile therapy, you have to know the staging beforehand because everything depends on that. So... Stage 3A is positive retroperitoneal lymph nodes, but only microscopic deposits in the, in the peritoneum. Macroscopic deposits start from stage B, but still they are less than 2 cm with or without retroperitoneal lymph nodes. So you understanding that this macroscopic deposits per its, by itself are very important prognostic factors with or without retroperitoneal lymph nodes, which is stage 3C. Macroscopic deposits in peritoneal cavity with or without retroperitoneal lymph nodes positive. And then comes stage 4, stage 4A and stage 4B which is so different from the rest of the cancers. Stage 4A is pleural effusion. Stage 4 is pleural effusion which goes to the lung, lung cavity which is positive for malignant cells. And stage B is hepatic or splenic. Now one thing which I uh, should mention over here right now is I've written something like ex extension to the capsule of the liver and spleen. So by the time the capsule of the liver and spleen is involved, that is still stage 3. 3A or sorry, 3B or 3C, both of them, the capsular involvement is possible. But if it goes to the parenchyma, see, this is the liver, right? That is the capsule. So till the capsule is involved, stage 3. But if it goes here in the parenchyma, stage 4, that too, stage 4B, worse prognosis. So, hepatic splenic parenchymal involvement or the involvement of lymph nodes outside abdominal cavity. Outside abdominal cavity, that means I'm talking about, I'm talking about inguinal lymph nodes. So, very, very important when, patient, when, the, when the examiners want to ask you in the exams uh, regarding this, uh, you know, what else will you examine? When you're examining a, a patient of abdominal lump, would you examine something else? Locally, would you examine something else locally? And people are, you know, what the hell does he want to hear from us? It's inguinal lymph node examination. Why? Because if inguinal lymph nodes are uh, palpable, that means they are involved. And it's automatic stage 4B, very poor prognosis for uh, ovarian cancer patients. So even after debulking and, uh, you know, chemotherapy and everything, the it's actually basically a palliative treatment for such patients. It's already stage 4B. What else would you do? So, you know, your supraclavicular lymph node involvement, linguine lymph node involvement, these are all in, uh, involvement of lymph nodes outside the abdominal cavity, so very, very poor prognosis. And with this, we finish ovarian carcinoma uh, staging. I hope you've understood. Like I would say again, please, strongly, I would recommend, after seeing this class, just go and read it yourself. And I'm very sure this thing will always and always stick to your head. You might not get confused. And remember one thing, any stage that you're confusing, getting confused with, you know, write that stage first. Remember only that stage first. And the rest stages you can, you know, kind of fashion along with it. Once you know this stage 3C, which is the most difficult stage, you can easily make stage stage 1 and stage 2. Well, that's my funda. Everybody has a different funda. And I'm sure you will get your own if you just revise it once and twice with me after this class. So, I'll see you next in the FIGO staging of C endometrium, which is the easiest of all.